Hey guys and welcome back to the sixth part already in this cave level tutorial. Um, as you can see, I've imported everything into Unity, um, but there's the main difference between last time is that I pretty much changed everything that I could. I wasn't very pleased with the detail I was getting in my texture, so what I did was that I just split everything up into two parts. So you got this side of the level and this side of the level. Uh, by doing that, I could use two textures. And I've also changed the texture map size to 4K, so now I've got two 4K maps for both sides. The details, the texture details just look better this way. Uh, also, I've upped this texture as well to 4K for the props. They, it just looks a lot better, <laughs> let me put it that way. Um, one quick thing about the workflow from System Spinter into Unity is that they are almost the same but not the same for example when uh, in substance painter you ha you can paint a channel for the uh, roughness but unity uses a smoothness channel so for example oh, I can get rid of this one and this beautiful paintings for example when I get grab my metallic for my key blocks well this is this different one for example for my gate it's a bit easier um, in order to get it to work you need to put your smoothness channel in your alpha map of your metallic map and also invert it by, by pressing ctrl i or command i if you're on a mac because they are the opposite so from substance painter you get a uh, ro uh, roughness map but for unity you need a smoothness map so you need to invert this, this channel and it will look just fine it's a bit of a trick it's a bit of annoying as well but once you know you won't do it wrong again like I did it the first time so as you can see I've imported everything I'm going to turn the skybox for a second there you go um, and today we're going to focus on the functionality of our level right now it's just a level that we can walk through and that's it there's nothing happening so when I press play, play now it will probably be extremely dark well you can't see anything that's helpful but everything works uh, well just for the for the main level part at least so the first thing I want to do is I want to set up my collisions so I've done this for the level I just created a mesh coll uh, collider it's a bit dirty um, and in the end we will change this definitely to a, a single a mesh uh, collision mesh because right now also the roof for example is also given coll uh, collisions so that's a bit over the top we don't need it so we're gonna fix it on later in a later video uh, so this one we're gonna add functionality and scripts to it next one we're gonna do the lighting and mood and particles and all shebang and the final one will be about optimization so um, occlusion calling uh, better textures because right now the textures are massive because everything is still a PSD so for example one of them is like 400 and like 200 MB well this one's pretty small but there are also a couple of them are over uh, 120 NMB, that's a little bit over the top, so we'll, but that's for the uh, later videos. So the first thing I want to do is set up my collisions for my props. Uh, you can do this two ways, for example you can add the actual collider, box collider to it. But it's very annoying because now it adds for everything and you have to, s to center everything up perfectly like zero, 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 and then change the scale of everything, it's just utterly annoying so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own boxes and then I'm going to turn those into collision objects so I'm going to create for example a cube here I'm going to place it over my arch like so a little bit better and scale all the way up like so for example a little bit bigger until it fits roughly and then I'm just going to turn off my mesh render so it 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 still gives us collisions because the box collider is still on, but we can't see it. And this is just a very cheap way of adding collisions to your level instead of going through the mesh collisions because this is very very expensive. So we're not going to do that. So let's call this um, arch left, and we can do the same thing on just copy paste it to the other side. There you go and just make it fit okay let's make it a little bit bigger okay 
So, one of the key things so as well is uh, is your hierarchy. Right now, it gets a little bit messy because we just had two collision objects, but we're gonna add like ten more, and it just would we'll just get this giant list. It just doesn't work that well. So what you can do is create groups or sort of groups by just creating an empty game object. For example, I'm gonna call this my collision objects. Oh, without the backslash. And then you can just drag your collision objects in there. I'm gonna do the same thing for the meshes themselves. So I'm gonna create a well you could let's call this geometry. I can just drag everything under there. So you get a nice clean hierarchy menu. And save this. So let's do this small blocks as well. So that I can add a box a cube. Just place it where it should be. And I just turn off the mesh renderer again. It's a lot cheaper doing it this doing it like this, it'll be more efficient. It's just a little bit more work. But in the end it's a far better solution than just putting a mesh glider on everything. So let's call this um Arch Debris One. Let's grab this as well. This is actually arch right. Let's duplicate this one and turn it around. This just a, it's a bit more work, but it's far more efficient. Oh crap! Okay, and again, just drag it in your collision objects. So you get everything nice and organized. Okay, so that's the arch part. So let's actually check it. I'm gonna quickly add a quick light to it. Oh, I should drag a player on there. That should never. Okay. Well, let's just move our player up. Oh, too much. Let's quickly add a light there so we can actually see something. Would be helpful. Beautiful. Let's check the collisions. There it is. See now we can actually can't walk through them anymore. So that's perfect. Okay. Let's move on. That was the easy part. Then we get to the stairs. Um stairs are a bit tricky. Because we're gonna fake them. And we're gonna fake them by adding a slope to them. So you don't actually walk up the stairs but you walk up a simple plane. And that that gives us the collisions. So I'm gonna add a plane here. I'm gonna move it up there. First thing I'm doing is gonna check the width of it. It's way too big, so let's move it down. Make sure that it covers the entire corridor. Otherwise, you you might fall through the world. <laughs> it will be a, bit, a little bit awkward. So let's just get it up to the size that we need it. A little bigger. Yeah, it looks pretty odd. bigger still. Maybe something like, oh, we still need there, so a little bit bigger even. Just, just make sure that the this plane isn't actually sticking out here because then you'll just, just bump into it. That will just be very awkward, so try to avoid that one. So let's make it even bigger. There it is. See this part here is sticking out just a little bit, so I'm gonna move it a little bit to a little bit down. So something like this. Um if it's if it sticks out a little bit here on the bottom side, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, again, let's turn off mesh render. Let's call this stairs one. Save it again, drag it onto your collision objects. There you go. Let's duplicate it and let's turn it 90 degrees. Let's do world space global. This should be 90. Okay. And again, same method here, just move it over over the actual stairs. I'm gonna turn on the mesh render so I can see how it's doing. A little bit more. Okay, let's turn on global again, local. This looks pretty good, just a little bit higher. There. 
Then this this is fine. That's fine. Again, turn it off. Let's copy it again one more time. Let's do it over here. Okay, this is a bit too much, so let's just shrink it. Easy peasy. Let's grab this one. Again, rotate it 180. Like I said, it's a bit more work, but in, in the end, it's definitely worth it. Check. That looks pretty good. Yeah. So those were the stairs, but then we have these pillars over here, so we're going to do the same thing here. This time, I'm just going to add a cylinder. This one here, let's move it up. Where is it? There it is. Let's make it bigger so it actually fits the pillar itself. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just as close as possible. This looks pretty solid, so let's move it up. And there you go. And again, you don't need the entire pillar to be covered. It's just just the part that the player can actually reach. So let's call this pillar one. Uh, Pillar. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Okay, pillar. That's it. I'm gonna copy it because I also want a base to have collisions. I'm gonna turn it on again in mesh render so I can see what's going on. Shrink it. Could be a lot smaller, I suppose. There you go. And let's call this base. Two of them in collision objects. There you go. Just grab both of them and then just duplicate them. And just try to get it to fit this one as well, so that's pretty good. Okay, let's call this pillar base two. This pillar two. And I'm gonna grab all four of them. And I'm just gonna duplicate them again and move them to this side. Okay, this is number three. Then this should also be number three. Yep. And final one. Then we get this water ornament thingy magic over there. Oh, well, let's just so let's just create one there as well. So again, cylinder this time. Just make it fit. There you go. And then a little bigger. Now this one probably won't work as well because it actually has a bit of a shape in there, like like a curvature in there. But we just want this part here to be covered, so a little bit bigger, and then it's fine. Then it will do. Maybe a little bit too high though. Okay, let's then again turn on mesh mesh render. It's called this water ornament. Also the collision objects, and that's one is the well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So again, sphere, so cylinder, sorry. And just place it where it should be. There. Again, some part is taken out, but that's fine. Turn it off and let's call it well. Done. So those were all the collision objects. You can of course check if you want to. So we're here, let's go this way.
probably won't see as much, but it's, it's just about the idea that you can actually walk up the stairs. Because those are the most tricky ones. So let's see if it actually works. Shit done. Let's walk up. Yep. Fine. Okay. So let's add some scripts to it. For example, I want that this door, when the player walks in this stage here, that I want the door to shut down. Like just crash down uh, to this part over here and then the player has to pick up a key or maybe even two keys to actually make it open again so you can actually exit the level or finish the level so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an animation for this <coughs> I'm gonna a little bit higher something like that just up this point light so we can actually see what, what we're doing let's make it a little bit right as well there you go. it looks awful but that's, that's not the point right now just want to see it actually works so this first one I'm just gonna go to window and animation with my door selected I'm gonna click on the new one and I'm gonna create a folder in my assets and I'm gonna call it animations or animation I'm gonna call it animations then I'm gonna say uh, call this for example um, gate okay, closed close so it closes it then I'm going to add a property, in this case I want to want just to move the object, so I'm going to choose transform. And then in the end I'm going to move it to here. I'm just going to close it. To the location that I want it to be. So maybe something like this. And a little bit lower. Like that. So now it just plays, it looks very boring, but we're going to change that. A little bit later yeah, it feels a little bit better so what I want to do is I want to give it a more of, this, of a, a weight to it so I'm gonna go to my curves over here and I'm gonna go to my Y position so this is the curve that it's cur currently following it's just going in a straight line from point A to point B that's a tad boring so what I want to do is I'm gonna add some keyframes to it like for example here I'm just gonna add keyframe and add keyframe by doing this, you can actually create, alter the path of the actual object. So in this case, maybe a little bit higher, so it actually has a bit of a feel to it, something like this. Probably too fast, so let's do it there. Yeah, that looks uh, still slower. So it actually feels heavy. Maybe this one is even slower. Yeah, that's pretty okay. Maybe we can add even one more, like add keyframe over here and then just one more. This one, oh, not that, that one. I can move it up. See what it looks like. And then you get this, yeah. It's still a bit too fast, so I'm gonna move this one to the right. And this one as well. Yeah, even lower, no, let's do like this. Yep, I like that. Okay, maybe a little bit too high. There you go. Okay, so this looks pretty interesting. Not perfect, but for the moment it will do. But then this curve here is is not very interesting. Uh, we, we kind of want to see that the door actually picks up speed as it falls down right now it's just going like uh, it's, not too, it's not interesting at all so I'm going to click on this keyframe over here and I'm going to say freeze move that way you can actually change the curvature of, of set keyframe and this one as well so freeze move then you can actually create like this where it picks up speed as you can see so let's see what it looks like looks much better okay I actually kind of like that so I'm just gonna leave it for now as it is and I'm gonna go to my animations and get close and I'm gonna turn off loop time otherwise it'll just keep on looping right now it will do it because we're, cause we're still in the a in the window for animation but in the end it will not loop anymore okay so I'm gonna create a new one so I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna create a new clip and I'm gonna call this gate open. 
Oh, actually, what I want to do first is here, I'm going to create some more interesting stuff. So here I'm going to add a keyframe. Add a key. Uh, I want to get a, a little bit of a shock to it so it actually hits the ground with force. So maybe one more. It's too much, but you get the idea. Okay, let's fix that. This one should be here, a little, little bit lower. I'm gonna set this to f this part here, broken, so you can actually change the w the uh, the handles. Get a bit more control over it. Nah, that's way too much. And let's move this one. Oh, this it's moved, so we can actually create this curve here and there again. Okay. See the positions are correct. So I'm gonna grab my gate door. So here it's 5.92 and here it's even lower. So we want to change that definitely. So 5.92. So it actually st sticks at the same location otherwise it's gonna look weird. And we can maybe probably make it faster though. It's slow, or we can even add more keyframes to it. So I'm gonna add one here, maybe one here as well. This one goes down. This one goes up. This one should go down again, and then we're gonna add one more here that goes up. That looks much better actually. It just looks a bit weird now because it's looped. It's just annoying. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna. Set it to broken so I can change the individual handles. So this looks fine. Maybe this one a little bit straighter. Yeah, that's fine for for the moment. That's fine. Let's go to gate open. So I'm gonna. I know that it's. The position is 5.92. I'm gonna go to the gate open, and in the first frame over here, I'm gonna say it, that it should be at 5.92. Let's go to frame zero. I'm just gonna lower it so 5.92. So it, it actually starts at, at the same location as the gate closed version. And let's go to like one for example and just drag it up, up there. Let's do it like this. See the speed is okay, that's pretty okay. Maybe we can even do it a little bit lower, longer, something like this. It just feels a little bit more heavy. We can do the same thing here, where we just add this very sm small noise to it at first. So add key, add key, add to one more. This one a little bit lower. And then it then picks up speed. It's way too fast though, so. Still way too fast. It should be a little bit more subtle. Right now it's not subtle at all. Yeah, it looks a bit better. It's not perfect, but. For now, we'll just leave it like this. So again, I'm gonna set them to free smooth so I can change the curves of it. So I'm gonna move this one a little bit to this side, actually. I'm gonna grab this one here. I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm gonna lower this down by a lot. I'm gonna change this, something like that, so it picks up. It takes a while. Maybe let's do the same thing here. So it falls this curve, so it goes a little bit slower. We can actually change that a lot. There you go. Then we can also change these again one more time. I'm gonna slow slow them even more down. That looks a bit better. Still, that's much better. 
Much better. Okay, and then I'm gonna add one more, and I'm gonna call this gate idle, which will be my default state where the door will be in. So we got the gate close, gate idle, and gate open. I'm gonna go to my anim animator over here. I'm gonna grab my door. So by default, the gate close is the the default animation that it will play. I don't want that though. I want the gate idle to be the default. So I'm gonna set it layer default state. So just right click on the gate idle and set it to default state. So when I now play the game it actually won't close by itself, see? Because if I have for example the gate close as my default state and this will happen, it will just lower, it will just close. I don't want that so I'm gonna make my idle state as my default. Okay so now when the player gets like this area over here I want it to close. I want the the gates to close. So what I'm, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a box here which I'll be using as a trigger. So a box over here with the size that it's impossible to miss for the player. So I'll do like something like this. Just make it really big so that the player cannot cannot possibly miss it. Something like this and turn off mesh render. So there you go. Make sure that you set the to with box slider make sure that you set its trigger then it becomes a trigger. So also I'm gonna create a new empty and I'm gonna call this trigger object which is triggers and I'm gonna dro drop this one in there. I'm gonna call this for example gate uh, close trigger. So I, I noted that this one, this trigger here is associated to the gate closing. Maybe let's turn it around a little bit. Oh. It's a bit more straight compared to the corridor, there we go. A little bit high, oh, what the hell just happened? Zero. Okay. A little bit too big though, there we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is in my assets I'm gonna create a new folder. And I'm gonna call it scripts. And inside there I'm gonna create a C sharp script. And I'm gonna call this gate close. Or close gate. Let's do close gate. Makes a bit more sense. And I'm just gonna double click on it and I'm just gonna wait a little bit. I'm just gonna wait for the scripting editor to open up. Sometime today, hopefully. And there we go. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So this is C sharp, uh, which is the language that we'll be using. Um, it's one of the most used languages nowadays. It's actually really simple. It's really not that hard, and it's very neat. It's very clean, so that's why I, I like it a lot. So this is the class that we're working in, the closed gate class, and that extends to mono behavior. This is the void start which just runs once and this is the update that will run every single frame. Uh, you can also use a function that has been predefined by Unity, that's the void on trigger enter. No D capitals. Oh, is there actually an O? Is there a zero? Oh, that's an O. So when you, uh, when you trigger something you can actually like, print, for, uh, print for example. Oh, I should change that again. Uh, works, so that works. Okay, so it's now done it's for now, but it's not not in the game yet because we need to attach it to an object that's inside the game, so inside this part here in the hierarchy. So I'm gonna drag my close gate script on my go on my gate close trigger, and now I'm gonna hit play. If I can find it again, it should be there. And now it says in the bottom left here. That it works. So the trigger actually works. I'm just gonna move my player a little bit <laughs> towards the back. There we go. Let's see what angle is actually having. Okay. Let's see. Try it again. And it works. Okay. 
So we now know that this trigger actually works, and now we can actually start doing some interesting stuff to it. Like for for example, when we enter this trigger, that the the animation from the gate should start playing. So this one, then that should start playing. That would be really cool. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do though is add to my door. I'm gonna add a box to it, a collision box. Because right now you can still walk through the entire door. We kind of don't want that, so I'm gonna create a cube the size of my door oh, oh. let's erase it and again turn off mesh renderer see if that is correct a little bit bigger and then I'm got let's call this gate uh, collision then I'm gonna make this a child of my gate door so that when I when the door moves, this one actually moves with it, otherwise what's the point? So we've got the gate, it's not working, I'm gonna check here, it's on the gate door. It also has an, an animator here which we can call for. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm in here I'm gonna find an object that's called the gate door. So I'm gonna, and I wanna use the component called animator, so I'm gonna create a, a variable with the extension animator. And then I'm gonna call it uh, gate anim or gate animation. Then I'm gonna find my game objects and dot find. And I'm gonna look for the object called gate underscore door. Door. And then I'm gonna get the component animator. Like that. So it finds the game object or the object in the game called gate door. And then it gets the component animator, this one. Now I can I can say something like gate anim dot play, but then it then you have to to state what kind of state you want to play. So if I go to my animator again, I want the the state gate close to play. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna click. And I'm gonna type gate close. First, I'm gonna check that everything it should look that. There you go. So I see it actually works, would be nice if we don't because we get a nice little error. Uh, probably if we got a yep, semicolon. Okay, let's play. Actually trigger it and then it just closes the door. Pretty easy, pretty easy, pretty easy. So this is the trigger that just closes the door and that's it. So this is the first first stage, for example, of, of our of our game. Now, what I want to happen is that the player should pick up a key. Let's make a also make a key on check called lights. Or lighting, it's even better. Lighting. This one over there. So I want the player to pick up a key in this room over here, maybe even a second one. I'm just gonna move this one down. There you go. So I wanted to pick up a holy crap that's big. An object in this room, like a box for example. Just gonna set this to one. There you go. Beautiful. So in here you should pick up a key that activates the door that the door can open again. So I'm gonna move my player for a second, so I don't don't have to walk oh the entire way to there. I'm lazy, and, and so is the player apparently. Oh. There we go. See if it actually works. Would be nice. However, though, we've got one thing that we didn't add collisions to these boxes as well. So let's do that first. So I'm going to go to, again to my collision objects and I'm going to add a cube. Blow it up. So it roughly fits the actual stepping stone. So it's the stones where we can stand on a little bit like this brilliant 
Let's call this key block main. Let's see, it actually fits though. Otherwise, we can st we can walk in the air. Okay, that looks pretty damn tight. Let's do it up there. Let's co let's just copy it. bigger okay let's call this keep on right and one more time let's copy it to this one make sure that it fits a little bit bigger I think okay check See if, we can, if they actually work. They will, but brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. So up here, I want to add a key that the player can pick up. So I'm going to create a box for now. It's just a simple placeholder object that we can use. So this is my key, my beautiful key. I'm going to call this. Uh, key makes sense and I'm gonna add a trigger so another cube over there I'm just gonna make it a lot bigger I'm gonna turn out the mesh renderer I'm gonna set this trigger okay and then we'll call this key trigger so I'm gonna place the key trigger in my triggers and my key in my geometry there you go so when I trigger this trigger I want the, play, the player to be able to hold the key for example so that there's a, a object or a boolean that's set to true so first I'm gonna create a script that has the player stuff in there so I'm gonna play, create a player script which holds for example also your health but also if you have a key or not so I'm gonna open it in assembly C sharp more develops and I'm gonna just delete this because I don't need them at all and I'm just gonna create a public boolean called has key and I'm gonna set it to false initially so I don't have the key then I'm gonna create a new script and I'm gonna call this key script and I'm gonna place my key script on my key trigger so that should be this one there you go so when I hit this trigger I want to be able to pick up a key and de destroy this object over here so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my key script, delete these because I don't need them, and I'm going to create a void on trigger enter again. There you go. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to be able to dis destroy this cube over here, so this key. So what I'm going to do is on trigger enter, I'm going to find my game object. So first thing, I'm going to declare it as a game object, and I'm going to call it my key. It's game object dot find key, and it's just going to find the actual game object. So this object over here, and then I'm going, I can actually destroy it. Destroy my key. So when I now enter the trigger, that object should disappear. Let's find out if it actually does. Just that. Let's jump. And it's gone. As you can see. That's the first part. The second part is I want to be able to turn this boolean to true. So down here I'm gonna find I'm gonna declare this as a player script. Oh I should read a type. Player script uh, player attributes, for example, attri is game object of find my player. And then I'm gonna get the component player script of course this isn't going to work yet because the player doesn't have the actual script yet so it's going to complain so in here I'm going to drag on my player script it says here it has key or not so we now get the component then I can actually set it to true again so player attribute dot has key is true see if it actually works I'm going to keep this open over here I'm going to hit play 
and we're gonna see if this one actually sets to true it sets to true so now the player has the key and now for example he can open it open the gate again when he walks back um, but this is a bit boring right I want a bit bit more excitement in, in my level so what I can do is uh, we're gonna go cool on this like with, uh, with Temple Doom I'm gonna add a sphere here that just falls down the entire corridor like boulder and just destroys everything that would be cool so I'm gonna grab this light over here I'm just gonna duplicate it so I can see what the hell I'm doing place it up here somewhere oh what's it doing up there let's add it there so I want there to be a giant boulder falling down the stairs that's about to hit us and kill us that sounds like fun right so when I play I'm gonna pick up the key pick up the key and then I'm just gonna get the hell out of here and then I want there to be a giant boulder hitting me in the face when I get to this part that'll be fun I mean why not right so let's copy on this one more time I can see what I'm doing. There you go. Okay, so first thing I'm going to I'm going to add a sphere right here. So I'm going to create I'm going to object sphere. So I'll be up there. That'll be really helpful. There we go. And I'm going to make it a lot bigger. Something like this. So what we can do is actually really simple. We can just add a physics and reach a body to it. So I'll show you what happens. So we're gonna hit play. Go to machine and there goes my sphere. And it just falls down these stairs. Picks up speed as it goes along. Cool. It's a bit smaller, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, I think. And I'm gonna up the mass just for Right now, just for XC, if it works. So, up at the mass, and we're off. Will it make it? Will it make it? Uh, no, that's fine. That is fine. So, all we have to do now is right now it's always on and it's it just falls down. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my rigid body of my mesh render sorry and my sphere collider and I'm just going to get, ri get rid of rigid body altogether so it's now it's there but it's invisible I'm going to call it boulder and put it on a geometry so it's there but not there so when I trigger this trigger I'm going to find my object so I'm going to go for my game object dot find uh, game object uh, let's say my boulder uh, is game object I find boulder and then I want to do a couple of things to it because right now if I can find a game object I can access all of these uh, items over here so first thing I want to do is I want to turn on the sphere collider and I want to turn on the mesh render so I'm gonna say here for example uh, my boulder dot get component Uh, let's call this view collider dot enabled is true so now when I trigger this the sphere collider should be should be turned on so let's check it see what actually does that just that always double check and it's turned on brilliant let's do the same thing for the mesh renderer so get component again mesh renderer right then dot enabled is true then I'm gonna add component rigid body what you can also do for example is go to my boulder dot get component rigid body dot mass and say 5 maybe we can even for example get component Rich body 
dot velocity. We can actually increase the speed of which it falls. So let's say I'm just gonna probably fuck it up. It probably needs a float, so I'm gonna see if this works. Oh no! Why well, it uses factor? I think. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So we need a new. F uh, let's do factor three dot forward. See if that works. Yep. Okay. Let's play. Let's see what happens. Let's go to my scene. There it goes. It's going down. And it just hits a wall. Oh, no, no, no. It doesn't work. Okay. Let's play the game. So we're going to collide it. We're going to trigger it. Then we're going to find my exit. I should see a shadow coming up soon of the actual wall. Oh, there it is. And okay. <laughs> that looks actually really cool. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a collider here in the corner where it will, it will just bounce off. Because right now it just stops here. That's a little bit boring. I kind of don't want that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat physics. I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to lower it. Uh, move it, make it look bigger. I just want to get an angle where the ball can bounce off. So I'm going to turn off mesh renderer again. Let's move it up. So we're just going to place some pole. Let's uh, do this. Go to my scene. Incoming. There it is. It should bounce off and just go downstairs if I'm not. Yep, there it goes. So that works really, really, really well. It actually looks really cool. Easy peasy. That actually looks really cool. <laughs> I'm surprised by that. So let's check it again. Let's trigger it. It's triggered. Let's go up. You see giant boulder. So what what we're gonna do later on is actually add uh, some health to the player. So when he gets hit by the boulder, he will just die. So the player actually has to dodge them. Okay, so pretty easy so far. But everything is now centered around this space here on the right side. A bit boring. So we might want to add a secondary key here, for example. So I'm gonna quickly create my point line. I'm gonna just copy it. I'm gonna place it there. Christ, that's big. Oh. So I want to have a secondary goal, objective, to here. So I'm c I just can create a box around here. And this is our secondary key, so I'm going to call this key 2. But then we have to change a couple of things. So for the player only currently has one key, like has key. So I'm going to change it to has key 1 and copy it into has key I'm gonna grab this box over here. I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna make it look bigger. I'm gonna call this key to trigger. I'm gonna move this one. This is the actual box into my geometry. And this one, this is my. Hey, what did I just. What? Oh. I'm just being stupid. Let's call this boulder collider into my collision objects there you go let's turn off mesh render and turn on is trigger otherwise it won't work so it, let's do this to the uh, triggers there you go and then we can actually do the same thing here with the script you can almost do the same so i'm going to copy and create a secondary script i'm going to call it key to script and we're going to add it to the trigger I should really. What? Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. This doesn't work anymore, so we need to do this has key one. There you go. That should work. Yep. Let's add this one to that one. So drag it on there. 
Let's open a script. We haven't done already. No. We can almost copy paste the same thing here. So first, let's do this. We can delete these ones again. Void on trigger enter. There you go. This should be has two. And this should be key two. The object is called key two. So let's move our player again, see if it actually works. Let's go move it all the way back to this part here. Kind of because we're lazy. disappear. So now it actually says has key 2 and has key 1, that's perfect. So what we can do now is at the gate for example we can add a giant box over here that will check to see if the player has both keys and if he does have both keys then we can actually open the door again. So same as usual, create a cube. I'm gonna make it so big that the player can, cannot miss it. Let's do it like this, bigger, bigger, bigger. Turn it off again, so this is impossible to miss. Actually it is. Let's do it even bigger. Done. So when the player enters this trigger over here, I want him to check to see if he has both keys. If so, open the gate and let the, uh, the player out. So we're gonna call this uh, key checker, key check. Again in my triggers, here we go better and we're gonna create a script that's called key checker as well so key check let's open it up okay again we're gonna delete these we don't need them void on trigger enter okay then we've, we have to check to see if the player has both keys so what we can do is uh, so player script player attributes is game object dot find to the eyes capital player and then get component player script and then we can say if um, player attribute dot has key one and dot has key two so uh, now i'm just checking if these are true if i do like this it means if it falls so now we're just going to check is if this one is true and this one is true as well then get the animation so we're going to say animator uh, gate anim again is check dot find gate underscore door dot get component as usual animator then we can say gate anim play and then I think it was gate open if I'm not mistaken let's check it gate open there it is okay let's move our player again to the start and I'm just, I'm just gonna cheat I'm gonna set them all to true. So I'm gonna set these all to, to true. So I can see if it actually works. It doesn't. For a reason. Uh, key check. Because so I've not set it to being collider, uh, like a trigger. So I'm gonna first check with this one. So it gets closer. So I'm gonna check. It should now close the gate. There it is. Now I'm gonna enter this one. It should open, but it's not doing that. Is it on? No, it's not. <laughs> Stupid. And check. There it goes. So close. And open. Brilliant. Now we can 
exit game you can actually add, add, add a trigger here that says congratulations you have won the game for example or something like that so pretty easy uh, not something really fascinatingly hard it's quite simple so I got a bunch of script just basic stuff this is a pretty interesting part here where you can add the add components to it and for example add physics to them um, well maybe we could do one more um, that's really fun so I've got these boxes over here I kind of want them to while well, they're now just standing there looking pretty but I want them to rotate so what I can do here for example I can create a script like rotate key and in my transform in my update function I can just type in here transform dot rotate and then we can use effective 3 say example forward times uh, time dot delta time times 100 so now it will just spin so I can actually grab this one here this cube and kind of add the component here Let's see what it does see it now actually slowly spinning so it's a bit more alive so let's do one more let's add the right to it now it's just going forward let's also do right so now spins around a bit more dynamically so we get this this looks pretty cool it just starts spinning and we can even even add something to it like a particle system to make it a bit more interesting let's grab the other triggers uh, it key as well so do the same thing here rotate key on top of it and this one will turn as well just simple stuff to make it a little bit more interesting it just looks really cool let's face it so I hope you had some help with this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it uh, next one we're gonna do the lighting which is the cool part where we come well, we'll, we'll give it a mood and we're gonna add particles and we're gonna just make it look pretty so I hope, hope to see you again next time and, and I'll see you guys later